Good morning and welcome to my Friday morning office hours. So a couple weeks ago, you may remember, I did a video about, uh, inspired by Amanda Gorman, and my friend Risa responded and said, it would be cool for us to explore the opposite problem, which is when you have, you have ability, you know you have talent, but your confidence doesn't match. Uh, and also, how do we manage our imposter syndrome? Which is a great follow-up question. So first of all, if you are a writer and this question, this topic resonates for you, I have an online course that is called Provisional Confidence for Writers. So how I define, so you can, you can find that course through the link that's in my bio right now. It's a different course, but you can find it. Um, it's cometparty.teachable.com. So how I define provisional confidence is it's the belief in yourself that you cultivate before your talent has been ratified by the establishment, shall we say, or your peers. And that is something that can be cultivated. And we're going to talk about, we're going to, we're going to talk about two, two specific things for you to work on in order to build your confidence. So first of all, and this, I'm going to speak more generally than I do inside that course. So this is for all artists of all stripes. So first of all, if you are, if you're just starting out and you know that you have potential, but you're suffering, you feel like you're suffering from a lack of confidence and it's holding you back. I want you to focus on building, generating a body of work. So this is what we're doing for the first, you know, five, 10 years, you know, we're putting in our 10,000 hours so that at the end of that, we can look back at the work we've done and, and see that it was foundational, see how we were building our skills, see how we were cultivating our talent. Um, and so I know some of you are, you know, watching this and you're like, well, I've already been at this for five or 10 or 15 or 20 years. And so now what? So you have your body of work and I should, I should clarify that I don't want you to fixate on building a brilliant body of work. Just generate a body of work and then over time you're going to be leveling up and leveling up and leveling up, right? So just like in your portfolio, you uh, put in a new piece and that is like your new best piece and then the, the, the piece that you're the least proud of, then that, that goes away. That's deleted from your portfolio. It becomes part of your juvenilia maybe. So if you have that 10, 15, 20 plus years of experience, I want you to revisit, I want you to explore your own body of work. So what do I mean by this? If you are a writer, I want you to sit down with the words that you have put down on paper, whether they've been published or not. If you are a musician, I want you to listen to your own tracks. I want you to listen to your own albums. Clear, distract, clear all distractions, focus on doing this and only this for you know an afternoon, say. If you're a painter, I want you to revisit your own images. And I want you to see the proof in your own pudding. And the proof in your own pudding. Oh my goodness, I completely lost my train of thought. proof in your own pudding because you know after a certain point you stop saying I can't do this right or I'm not good enough because you've proven yourself wrong right okay I remember my point where I was going with this so as you revisit your work as you really take in and reflect on the body of work that you've built thus far you are not going to listen for the flaws, pick out everything that you would have done differently. You are deliberately not doing that. Oh, hey, Hannah. Um, sorry, I get so like, you know, focused on the message that I forget that sometimes there are people listening in live, which is great. 
So you are not going to pick apart the work that you have done so far. Instead, you are going to ratify the work that you, you have done. You're going to give yourself space to feel good about the work that you've done, even if it turns out to be what you would consider foundational. Doesn't matter. You're not looking for flaws. You're not looking for everything you would have done differently. I know I'm repeating myself here, but it's really, really important. Do not, don't do that. So what I want you to do instead is, yes, you're appreciating your own work, but I want you to, as, as Emily Dickinson said, dwell in possibility, right? So I want you to reflect on your body of work with an eye towards or an ear towards where you want to grow from here, which for me is the most exciting question that I can ask myself. And that's why I ask myself this question on a daily basis. I am always thinking about what comes next. Well, first of all, first of all, yes, I acknowledge that I've put in the work and I've cultivated my talent, but then in order to think about what you to, to get to the next level of excitement and the next level of, um, you know, realizing my potential. I think about where I can go from here. So, and that's, you know, satisfying the, the, the creative cravings that you have. Think about something you've always wanted to do that maybe you haven't had the courage to do until now. Honor the progression, right? Um, and I'm glad that Hannah is here because this is something that I, I wanted to talk about at some point, but we might as well talk about it now. To honor your apprenticeship, because Hannah's really good about that. She's working on her first novel right now, and she's not one of these writers who is feeling this, um, this panic to try to prove herself as quickly as possible. Um, you know, we all feel that little twinge of, Wunderkind syndrome, but for the most part, she's focusing on writing this first novel as her apprenticeship period, her initiation into the life of a novelist, which I, you know, really, really respect and admire about you, Hannah. So please think about that. If you're in the phase where you're, you know, still working on your first five or 10 years, think about the progression and the apprenticeship period and focus on that. Okay, so we've talked about generating a body of work and we've talked about reflecting on that body of work and thinking about where you wanna go from here. And so the second thing I wanna talk about is the cultural indoctrination of, you know, you're, you don't realize just how much that cultural indoctrination is informing your self-talk so you don't realize to the, the extent to which your, your measure, your self-regard, how you, how you measure your talent, how you measure your potential is informed by what the culture is telling you about what is and is not good enough, what is and is not worth listening to or buying or reading, whatever it is. And so, so the part two of your assignment for this week is to train yourself. I know I've talked about this a lot. I talked about it in Life Without Envy. I wrote Life Without Envy because people don't wanna read Eckhart Tolle, so I wrote this book for them instead. Train yourself to notice when your thoughts are lying to you, which they often are. And so you may be consistently telling yourself because the culture is telling you that because you are not a Grammy winning musician, then what's the point? Which is, you know, an artistically and spiritually impoverished attitude to be carrying with you throughout your life, right? So there is a deprogramming aspect that has to occur. And once you have trained yourself to observe your thoughts and you're not believing them anymore you're just noticing them and responding to them 
with a sense of gentleness and non-judgment. The imposter syndrome is going to take care of itself. And, you know, quick footnote about the word imposter. There is, you know, if someone is an imposter, they are deliberately misrepresenting themselves. And so writers write and musicians make music and visual artists make images. And that's it. And, you know, the, the, the thought that I want to leave you with is, oh, there's so many thoughts I want to leave you with. This, we, we, we will have multiple follow-ups on this topic because, you know, wrote, wrote a book about it, wrote a course about it, still have more to say about it. So please leave me follow-up questions underneath um, this, this video or, you know, send me an email, DM, whatever it is. I will be delighted to answer follow-up questions. Uh, but the thought that I want to leave you with is, oh crud, I forgot the thought I wanted to leave you with. <laughs> imposters, imposters, imposters. Oh my gosh. Well, maybe we'll lead with that thought next time. <laughs> How about that? Um, okay, cool. So I hope that this has been helpful. More than anything else, and I'm not sure if this was the original thought that I had that I wanted to leave you with, but you know, we all have our note. I'm going to, I'm going to go with Risa's, uh, I'm going to use that metaphor because she's a jazz musician and you should check her out. Risa branch at Risa branch. I'm going to, I'm going to tag you Risa. Um, and I forgot it again. No, the note, you have your note. You're singing your note and, you know, maybe the work that you came here to do in this lifetime doesn't involve you winning a Grammy or winning a National Book Award or whatever it is. You know, that's somebody else's path. It's somebody else's life. And okay, we're, we're bringing it back now to the, you know, monitoring yourself talk, right? Don't live your life by deficits. Don't see your career in terms of deficits. And I think that is, okay, I think we've got to the heart of it now. The imposter syndrome will take care of, of itself when you train yourself to notice when you are seeing your efforts in terms of deficits rather than in terms of learning and offerings and joy. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, let's, let's have follow-up conversations about this because there's so much more that we can talk about. And I am here to nurture your tender creative heart. So please ask me all the questions and, uh, that's it. Have a lovely day. Oh, one more thing. I did not get my private writing mini workshop out this week having a little bit of tech difficulty, but that's okay. It's gonna launch on Tuesday. So if you want to be on that list, this is, private writing is for everyone. It's not just if you consider yourself a writer. Um, so this is actually gonna support all of the work that I've been talking about in this, that I've been suggesting in this video. So if you are not already on my list, um, DM me with your email address and I will put you on there and then you'll get access to the Free workshop and workbook when it drops on Tuesday. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful life.